a lot of people will say a lot of things about accounting that you know accounting originated here accounting originated there but i'll tell you accounting originated see there are a lot of civilizations that are out there there are a lot of people having a record of about a lot of things we don't have a record of a lot of things because certain things happen in the history but doesn't mean we don't have them we are one of the oldest civilizations we have harappa we have mohenjo-daro but we are not going for a history lesson i'm talking about something for which we do have evidence that is Kautilya's Arthashastra. Now Kautilya's Arthashastra is something as a huge voluminous book. You will see Kautilya being Kautilya. His name was Vishnu Gupta Chanakya. He was a professor in the world's first university called as uh, Takshashila University. Now as of now it is in the ruins and the location if you are asking Takshashila belongs to of the place which is in the north Pakistan we should say as of now because Pakistan also used to be part of India back then. So when we say Arthashastra, Arthashastra is the only book that Chanakya has written. It is written in uh, Sanskrit. It's a huge book. It talks about sociology, it talks about economics, it talks about politics, it talks about how to rule. All those things and there is a chapter for accounting as well. It talks about how to record things, how to maintain database. So that is where uh, we can say the fact or evidence that we have. Chanakya belonged to the, uh, belong to the modern dynasty. He was a mentor for the uh, what we can say founder of the Mauryan dynasty called as Chandragupta Maurya. He was the one who was uh, humiliated by a, a ruler called as Dhananan. Dhananan was a ruler in Magadh. He, he had this capital in Magadh or Patliputra I think. So current day Bihar as of now. So he humiliated Chanakya. Then Chanakya decided to take revenge from him. And that's how uh, he started training this fellow Chandragupta and he made him the emperor and that becomes one of the greatest dynasties ever we had uh, rulers like uh, Chandragupta Maurya then af after that we have somebody called as Bindusar then the great Ashoka so he's, uh, the legacy what he built Ashoka took it to the different level now we are not talking about Ashoka or Maurya dynasty's legacy but we are talking about accounting uh, as a history of accounting so Kautilya's earth does talk about accounting but when it comes to modern day accounting, we call it as something called as double enter system of bookkeeping or double double enter system of accounting. Now this guy, Luca the Passively, he is considered as the father of modern day accounting. Now he was a mad mad guy, okay. He gave the basic principle of accounting that is called as fundamental principle of double entry. Now it's, the principle says for every debit there is an equal and corresponding credit and for every credit there is an equal and corresponding debit. So it says one side you see debit on the other side you will see credit now both go hand in hand debit equals to credit credit equals to debit that is what this guy Luca the passively said and that's what the principle we are following he was somewhere in 15th century if I'm not wrong just look after the dates I'm most of the time I'm not correct with the dates but somehow I remember so 15th century somewhat I can recall so that was the time this guy Leonardo da Vinci he was friends with Leonardo da Vinci so that was the time Italian European I should say right so he came up with this principle every time he would he would see something he would say debit every time he would say something he would say credit so debit credit he used to say all these things remember back then in 15th century somebody saying debit and credit people would consider him mad and trust me when people start calling you mad you're somebody who will actually create this this guy did so he came up with this particular uh, fundamental principle of double enter system that is called as uh, there are two types two types of uh, two sides of any transaction one is called as debit one is other one is called as credit and both will always be equal right because if i buy a pen of 10 rupees pen is what i'm getting and amount what i'm paying is of 10 rupees both are of same pen has a value of 10 rupees my money what is going is has the worth of 10 rupees that is how simple it is now one will be debited the other one will be created now what will be debited what will be created that's a different thing we will look upon into it right now there is an example uh, over here for example somebody sells uh rupees or uh, goods for rupees two uh, twenty thousand in cash so cash definitely will come in and goods are going out so either way one will be debited and the other one will be created that's just a simple example uh if you don't understand pause it and have a look into it now this particular thing is called as at the time of recording both the aspects as recorded by debiting one account and creating the other account the system of accounting is called as double entry system of bookkeeping this entire system rule whatever we have this is called as double entry system of bookkeeping right if you are studying in your 11th standard if you're in your, your first year of bcom bba graduation maybe you're doing ca foundation cs foundation things like that whatever at the beginning level sometimes uh, these kind of stupid questions will be asked that what is double entry? this is very simple there's nothing anybody can say that okay if you don't know that that means 
don't know anything about accounting but this is very basic still i'm saying because these are the kind of things being asked in our education or academic system right we, we will talk about academic system one fine day but for now let's talk about double entry system now before we get into debit and credit before we understand double entry we need to understand something called as what is account now account is nothing but a summarized record of some if i say let's say i talk about your instagram account or let's say i talk about your snapchat account or your facebook account or your whatsapp account any account that you see what is it your instagram account is nothing but summarized record of whatever things whatever photos videos reels stories whatever you have posted on your instagram your account will have a summary or record of everything now in accounting everything we see everything we refer to we call it as account for example if i see you i will call it as you account if you see me you will call it as me account if i see phone i will call it as phone account if i see a institution i will call it as institution account if i see a store i will call it as store account if i see a furniture i will call it as furniture account if i see a comb i will see call it as comb account if i see a tripod i will call it as tripod account if i see a mirror i will call it as a mirror account anything that you see anything that you know anything that you are going to record it is nothing but an account right now that account if i say phone account so that phone account will have the summary or record of all the transaction that i have happened all the transaction that i have dealt with in phone if i say rahul account that means rahul's account will have the summary of all the transactions i have ever had with rahul this is how simple it an account is nothing but a summary of things a summary of dealings a summary of transaction it's a record simple very simple now here certain examples i have given bank of india account salary account rent account whatever you can think of anything is nothing but account because that talks about the record of that particular thing now we are classifying these accounts into two broad categories one is called as personal account the other one is called as impersonal account now this is a very interview question people often get confused people consider it as three types of accounts no there are not three types of accounts there are only two types of accounts one is personal the other one is impersonal impersonal account is further classified into two broad categories real account and nominal account. now we have three personal real nominal this is what three people remember but these are three functional conceptually there are only two personal impersonal when we come to functional aspect we have personal real nominal right but real and nominal are categorized into impersonal now what is personal account personal means something that belongs to a person a person like you and me that is personal real real is very simple real means something that you can see i can see my computer i can see my phone i can see my camera i can see the lights i can see the furniture i can see my building i can see the room i can see the walls i can see the charger everything that i can see that is nothing but real account as simple as that simplest of all the accounts is real account what is nominal nominal means something that is real but i don't call it as real i call it as no why because i have given it some other name for example you are rahul but I, I call it as darling rahul darling automatically that becomes a name i am giving to you that becomes no now sir is it like that no let's say for example you uh go to tinder you make an account you purchase uh, something called as uh tinder premium or tinder gold what is it would you not pay for it it's not going to be free my friend you have to pay for it so let's say you pay for tinder premium or tinder gold what do you pay tell me you pay subscription fees yes or no think about it let's, let's try to have a conversation answer me any subscription let's say you took a subscription from linkedin let's say you took a youtube premium membership or any membership you're taking what you're paying you're paying a membership fees is it think about it you're not paying fees what you're paying is money but the money that you're paying you're calling it as membership fees or subscription fees think about it when you pay rent for your house are you paying rent or you are you paying money when you receive salary or your parents receive salary or somebody receives salary are they receiving salary or are they receiving money when you pay fees for your college for your school are you paying fees or are you paying money think about it when you paying electricity bill are you paying electricity bill bill or are you paying money at the end the core of the matter the crux of the matter is that all you are paying all you are receiving is nothing but money but the same money you are calling it as differently sometimes that you call it as subscription fees sometimes you call it as rent sometimes you call it as electricity bill sometimes you call it as college fees tuition fees sometimes you call it as examination fees sometimes you call it as tender gold membership fees sometimes you call it as salary whatever it is some names you are giving to it right so whenever you give that but money is real right if i say money it will be real and it will become real account but the money that i'm paying i'm calling it as 
let's say rent i'm calling it as fees so that is a name that i have given to my money that becomes you once you start giving names to something that becomes dominant. so all now i can summarize it into broader categories all the expenses expenses are nothing but payment of money income is nothing but you're receiving money or you call it as some expense or you call it as some income all your expenses all your income profit what is profit profit is nothing but money the money that you're earning you're calling it as profit the money that you have spent or something that you have lost you call it as losses at the end expenses losses profits income these are the names terminologies that you have given these are nothing these are some real money right so whenever we talk about expenses income that is going to be nominal account now i hope you're getting i, ho I hope you're uh, being in line with me what i'm trying to say personal real nominal real is something that you can see something that you have given some name to is nominal now when it comes to personal account we have something called as three broader categories of persons one is called as natural person like you and me for example rahul amit rohan akshay sheila whatever it is the people you can see the people you can interact with the people you know those are natural person made by nature they haven't been made in a factory now what about artificial person are they made in factory no these are the people who have been considered as person by law law calls them as a person so those are always going to be your institutions like college your bank your organization where you work right and if, if, let's say you go to your school and you see your school tell me give me one honest answer just pause this video right away write it down in the comment box can you see your school tell me if you can see your school. see seeing your school is not at all possible you can see the school's building you can see the teachers the boards students everything ground gate everything that you can see can you see school school is some name that you have given all these things belong to school all those things are property of school at the end you cannot see but school is still a person why because law calls it law has given that status of person to the school to the college the company where you work to the business remember we talked about business and businessman being two separate identity separate entity business is also an entity a person businessman is a separate person business is a separate person that is what artificial person means why because law calls it hospitals banks company anything that you can see all the organizations that you can refer to they are artificial then what is person's representative person's representative means something that is not a person something that you call it as something but it represents a person now what it can be at the end let's say you're supposed to pay rent to me or let's say let's say you're supposed to pay rent to your landlord now when you're paying rent that's an expense what if you did not pay the rent what does it become that becomes unpaid rent is it an expense no you haven't paid it how can you call it as an expense because you are not paying for it it's an unpaid rent that means are you not going to pay you're going to pay i believe you're going to pay if you're going to pay then what is it it's a liability upon your head which you're supposed to pay something that you are supposed to pay you did not pay that means it's a burden it's a liability now that liability the you're writing the word as unpaid rent now unpaid rent is nothing but a liability which represents and law every liability is connected to some person because liability means you're supposed to pay you sub you are owing something when you say creditors that means you're supposed to pay to some person creditor is nothing but the word you have given to some person right so all these liabilities they represent something even certain assets are also there for example i am supposed to receive fees from you now let's say we are in the month of october so you're supposed to pay me fees tuition fees for october but what if you pay for november also that is in advance that means it's not your money which i am holding that means it's an asset for you not for me for me it becomes a liability because i pay but it's your money you can anytime take it back because you haven't taken service you haven't taken tuition for november yet so now whatever you say something paid in advance something not paid something received in advance either it is going to be an income received in advance or it is going to be an expense received paid in advance or unpaid whatever it is it represents some person that's why that is also called as nominal account if i say capital capital is what capital is not a nominal account capital is not a real account 
capital means it's not my money now i'm talking from a business perspective so as a business it's not my money it is owner's money that means as a business i have to return this amount to the owner that means it is my liability towards the owner when i say capital it represents owner owner is a person that's why capital is also a personal account so things like that will always be personal account now this is a little tr tricky but you'll understand eventually slowly, slowly day by day right personal account for example uh, if i say owner owner is going to be having two p types of personal accounts I, it will be capital account or drawing account capital means the money that owner has put in drawing means the money that owner has taken out from a business if owner takes out money it will be create, uh, put it to his drawings account debit or credit will see capital if he brings in some money that will be put into his bank bank either it is going to be borrower or lender either you either you will borrow money or lend money to the bank other than owner and bank outsiders either they're going to be your customers or your suppliers or again borrower or lender outsiders also you can lend money or borrow money from right or you sell them something or you buy from buy something from them that's all right very simple real account real account means things that you can see you can see land building furniture stock cash your things that are visible nominal account nominal account means these are the uh, things that have been given certain name salary what is salary salary is nothing but money you don't receive salary you receive money but the money you call it as salary so it's a for somebody it is an expense somebody it is an income either way income or expense it is nominal account traveling traveling means for traveling you pay certain uh, fare or certain expenses or certain amount of money to it but you call it as traveling expenses rent you're paying money but you're calling it as rent interest you're receiving money you call it as interest or you're paying money you're calling it as interest you're paying money you're calling it as advertisement so that those are all nothing but in an account right now there are certain questions we are looking at one by one now i want you to answer these things of question number first capital account of mr amresh tell me which type of account it is going to before i do please take a notebook and sit with a note, no, notebook and a pen so start writing your start solving this thing side by side and let's verify it with whether we are going it going correctly or not capital account what is capital account of mr avnash which type of account it is going to it is capital capital represents owner that means personal account drawings of mr avnash what does it mean drawings means somebody who has taken the money owner has taken money so drawings again represents owner or is a person so again personal account then interest what is interest interest either you you are paying interest or you're receiving interest but what is it actually either it is going to be income or expenditure but in reality it is money you have given some name to it that is called as interest so it is nominal account furniture can you see furniture yes that means it is real account new india assurance limited account what is it new india assurance limited account that means it's a name of an organization it's an organization organization means a person <sighs> amar cooperating housing society what is it society means again a person what kind of person again it's an artificial person factory rent rent is what expense expenditure so expenditure means nominal account yes or no mr ashok kumar account ashok kumar is what artificial no a natural person cash account cash can you see cash yes cash can be seen that means real account you're getting moving on state bank of india account state bank of india is what state bank of india is nothing but an organization organization means artificial person stationary account what is stationary you buy something you call it as stationary do you buy stationary tell me what is stationary have you ever bought stationery tell me if i buy a pen i call it as stationery so do i buy a pen or do i buy a stationery what do you buy tell me if you if i say pen that will become real account but if i say stationery that will become nominal account why because i'm buying books i'm buying pen clips eraser rubber pencil sharpener but i'm calling it as stationery i'm given some name to it so stationery is an expense that's why we're calling it as nominal account computer can you see a computer real account we are going little fast traveling expenses we just covered expense means nominal account wages to workers wages is what work to workers you are paying some money but you are calling it as wages that means again 
it's an expense which will become which will make it as a nominal account postage and telegram what is postage and telegram you're paying some money for something you're receiving some telegram is a service a service you're paying that's an expense postage what is postage nothing you buy stamps you post certain things you call it as postage so expenditure again nominal account inventory what is inventory can you see inventory yes if i'm dealing in furniture furniture becomes my inventory if i'm are uh, dealing in grocery grocery becomes my inventory if i'm dealing in computers computers become my inventory can i see them yes or no that is real account depreciation can you see depreciation Dep now what is depreciation again uh, another concept depreciation is nothing but reduction in the value of asset let's say i purchased a car today for rupees 15 lakhs now would the value of car remain same always every car has a value let's say the car has a value of 15 years that is how uh, these rto rules are right so now if i say i'm going to use the car let's say i'm going to use the car for next 15 years so the value of car five years down the line would it be 15 lakhs what i purchased today the same will be something less maybe five lakhs maybe 10 lakhs it can be anything right so the amount that has been reduced that is nothing but the value that i have used if I use something, the value will go down. That reduction in the value of the asset is nothing but because of the usage of the asset. Even if I don't use the car, would it be of the same value? Still, the value will go down, right? Because of normal wear and tear. Even if you don't use, there is some normal wear and tear. There is some normal mechanic. Something will happen, right? That is nothing but depreciation. Now, it is called as expense. Depreciation is considered as an expense. So, if there is an expense, automatically it will come up nominal account now again value is going down but that reduction in the value we are calling it as depreciation you cannot see depreciation there is nothing called as depreciation that is just the reduction in the value it is just the usage of the asset but that whatever it is happening you are calling it as depreciation so another name you have given to something so if you give name to something it will be nominal account and it is an expense by default right yeah god is great ah what uh, avanti stores what is it stores means what which means in a person so it is going to be personal account now this is a homework this is an assignment for you i'm not going to check make sure to take a screenshot and try to identify what type of accounts does it mean these are certain accounts that are given to you i hope you're going to do this now that's all from my side for this particular video i'll stop over here there are golden rules okay i'll not stop i'll, I'll finish off I, I was thinking of making two different videos for golden rules, but i I understood it will take hardly five six minutes so let me continue this particular video golden rules now you know different types of accounts if you understood just pause this come back next time and continue from for golden rules next time onwards but i am making it as one full video again, right golden rules of accounting now we know three types of accounts personal real and nominal when it comes to personal account personal means you're dealing with some person when you're dealing with some person that means you're having some transactions a person either will give you something or will receive something from you these are the only two possibilities with a person when it comes to transactions you you cannot have any other transaction with a person either your other person is receiving something or giving something it, uh, either be you as a per, uh, you be as a person or me as a person if your two of us are having a transaction something i will give to you something you will give to me either money or goods or service whatever it is but these are the two possibilities only so we have the rule that is that is called as debit the receiver credit the giver whoever is receiving debit the that account whoever is receive, uh, giving credit that account personal account says debit the receiver credit the giver now moving on i'm going a little fast because there is no, not much explanation these are the things to be uh, remember these are the things to be learned these are the to be mugged up you have to mug up these things you have to uh, there is no other way right if you understand i try to make you understand but there is no other way personal account says debit the receiver credit the giver. debit the receiver credit the giver moving on real account real account means things there are things that are real things that you are seeing so those things either they are coming into your business or they are going out of your business now remember everything we are looking at from a business perspective so for, from my business either goods are coming in or they are going out either cash is coming in or going out either furniture is coming in or going out whether machinery is coming in or going out if it is coming in i debit it if it goes out i credit debit what comes in as simple right when things are coming in i call it as debit as credit debit what comes in what moving on nominal account nominal account it talks about four things expenses losses 
incomes gains so if it is expense or losses we debit it if it is income or gain we can debit all expenses and losses create all incomes and assets so the six golden rule these are called as golden rule these are the six lines of accounting if you know this you know entire accounting if you don't know rest of the accounting you will not be able to. that's why i said mug up i never say mug up i never say uh, ratta maro but here you need to do ratta maro ratta maro and learn these things personal account debit the receiver create the giver real account debit what comes in credit what goes out nominal account debit the uh, debit all ex uh, debit all expenses and all credit all incomes all right that's what it is debit the receiver create the giver debit what comes in credit what goes out debit all expenses and losses credit all as in right this is a question we have this is something we need to solve this is something uh, we need to go along with but uh, you need to know the rules without knowing the rules sorry I just move down the camera i know the footage will the idea is until and unless you know the rules you cannot solve this question to solve these questions you need to right so let's say we pause it up over here let's say we go ahead with something called as you know debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes just get back to this okay so whatever it is whatever you look at whatever you try to understand whatever you know or not but try to know the all this question now let's assume you know the rules so let's try to solve Mr. Avinash started business with a capital of rupees one lakh fifty thousand. Now you're supposed to identify two accounts. One account will be debited, another account will be credited. So let's say Mr. Avinash started business with a capital of rupees one lakh. Think it of from a business perspective. I as a business, in the business, what is happening? Money is coming in. Who is giving the money? Mr. Avinash. Who is Mr. Avinash? It is owner. When the owner gives money, it is called as capital i got two accounts one is called as cash account because cash is coming in the other one is capital account or avinash capital account. Now which account to be debited and which account to be credited because that's what your fundamental rule of uh, debit and credit says that one should be debited the other one should be credited so tell me cash is what type of account cash is nothing but real account real account says debit what comes in credit what goes in. is cash coming in or going out of the business coming in debit what comes in what i will debit is come or not ah has come cash will be debited and capital will be credited why capital is nothing but capital represents owner so debit the receiver credit the giver we are the one receiving who is giving it that's why owner's account will be dead owner's account is nothing but capital moving on to the second transaction he purchased a computer worth rupees 50000 now when you purchase computer what does it mean computer is coming in what is going out cash both are real debit what comes in credit what goes out computer is coming in so debited cash is going out so Credited. Now, transaction number three: purchased goods worth rupees thousand. You're purchasing goods. Call it as purchases. And if you're purchasing, of course, you have to pay. Purchases and payment means cash. Purchases is again purchases is nothing but goods or purchases an expenditure. So if it is an expenditure, it's a nominal account. Nominal account says. Debit all expenses and losses. So purchases should be debited. If you consider it as goods, goods is nothing but a real account. Real account says debit what comes in, credit what are coming in. Either way, you write it as purchases or you write it as goods. You consider it as a real or nominal. It will be debited. Cash is going out, so cash will be credited. I hope you're getting. Sold goods worth is forty thousand. Sales. Sales is an income. You consider it as income it becomes nominal account nominal account says credit all income and credit all incomes and gains automatically see if you consider it as goods goods are going out which means real real credit what either way sales or goods account will be credited and goods is going out that means you're receiving that is nothing cash cash will be debited and sales will be credited right a furniture was purchased for rupees fifteen thousand. When you purchase furniture, what happens? Furniture is an asset. 
ad is coming into the business and it is also real real account says debit what comes in so furniture will be debited is it is that furniture coming for free you have to pay for it so if you have to pay for it that means cash is going out of the business so it will be credited a cash payment was made towards office rent of rupees 5000 what does it mean payment is made that means cash is going out cash is real account credit what goes out for what purpose it is going out because we are paying for office rent what is office rent office rent is nothing but an expense if it is an expense it's a nominal account nominal account says debit all expenses and losses so office rent will be debited and cash will be credited moving on traveling expenses incurred of rupees 4000 same as office rent instead of office rent it's another expense called as traveling so instead of office rent and what will be debited it will be traveling expenses and credit will also to the cash very simple transaction number eight goods sold to rahul on credit for, for rupees twenty thousand of here things are interesting there are two types of transaction one will be cash transaction other will be credit transaction cash transaction means the payment is done or payment is received then and there if i purchase something i make the payment if i sell something i receive the payment then and there transaction is over but what if I am purchasing something and I am promising to pay next month. If I am selling something, the customer says I will pay next month. That is called as credit transaction. Are we required to do that? Yes, for business practice, yes. Because if you don't do that, your competitor will do and he will take away all the business. That's why we have to do it. So, credit transaction, when it comes to, there is no money being exchanged right away. If it is not being exchanged, that means what? either you owe money to somebody or you are supposed to receive money from somebody so you have to write the name of the person from the receipt or whom you are supposed to pay the money you're getting so when we say which transaction was it yeah transaction number eight goods sold to rahul on credit for rupees eight uh, twenty thousand when i say that that means goods are sold but money is not received that means we are going to receive it later from whom are we going to receive rahul so we should record rahul's name there are two accounts now one is sales account or goods account and the second one is rahul's account right so sales when it comes to sales sales is an income or when it comes to goods goods are going out so it will be credited income credit all income and gain so it should be credited what about rahul what is what is rahul doing when the goods are going out who is receiving the goods Rahul, debit the receiver, credit the giver. Goods are going out from the business, but they are going to Rahul. So Rahul's account shall be debited and sales account. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. Transaction number nine: purchased stationery for rupees ten thousand. What is stationery? Stationery is nothing but an expense. What is an expense? Nominal account. Nominal account says debit all expenses and losses. Account. Debited and if we are purchasing stationery, we are paying for that. That means cash is going out. So our credit what goes out. Getting it? What I'm trying to say? Money received from Rahul. What does it mean? It means the transaction that happened on eighth. You sold goods to Rahul on credit. Now Rahul is paying. Now Rahul is paying. That means we are receiving from Rahul. That is one thing happening. He is coming in you remember earlier we had written down name of rahul when we were supposed to receive money now we have received do we need his name anymore to rough it off now, but in accounting we don't erase anything we don't rough anything what happened when we wrote down his name we debited you look at the eighth rahul's account is debit in the debit column so rahul's account is debited now you want to erase his account so we don't erase it we credit it so that the balance is nullified once it was debited now it is credited so the total will be same there is no balance left there is no amount left to be received from Rahul that's what we do in accounting so that time we debited now we will credit another way we are receiving money from whom are we receiving Rahul Rahul is a person personal account says debit the receiver credit the giver receiver is us Rahul is the giver so we should credit Rahul's account both ways are you getting what i'm trying to say money is coming in cash is coming in so cash will be real account real account says debit what comes in so cash account is debited rahul's account is credited as simple as that i hope you understood if you did not understood pause it play it back 
go uh what is it go backwards pause play try to understand right you can repeat as many times you can rewind as many times you that's all from my side for this particular uh video or i i know it's lengthy but that's how it is if you want to learn genuinely things become lengthy you have to learn that right so i'll take take your leave for now i'll I'll take your leave for now. I also have certain. Time.